following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to uh, Dell in Texas. Hey, Dell, what's going on? Hey, Tom. How Thanks you doing, for man? My call. Great. Thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Appreciate it. I love your show. I just stumbled upon it probably, I don't know, maybe a month ago. And how'd you find us? I found you on YouTube. YouTube. That's a beautiful thing. Well, we appreciate you growling and prowling with us. Welcome to the Tiger family, man. Wow. I like it. Totally. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, a safe day. It's a TGIF, folks. Let's make it a great one. Don't make assumptions. Communicate with clarity. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness, and drama. If all humans would communicate with impeccability of the word, all our relationships would change. There'd be no wars, no violence, no misunderstandings. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up three. No, Dow Industrials down 40. NASDAQ up three. S&P's up a buck and a half. Gold contract up $19.60, traded at 1,360 an ounce. Silver up 22 cents at $20.41 an ounce. Platinum up $14 at $1,149 an ounce. Copper flat at $2.18 a pound. Light sweet crude up 35 cents, $41.49 a barrel. Bonds, the 10 year note up 15 ticks, 133.01. 30 year bond up a full point, 174.12. King dollar down 1,200 ticks, big move here, 95.47. The euro is up 106 at 111, and the yen is trading at 102. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Okay, so we've been hanging in the same place here. We're 216.19. That ABC structure on the way up, you get a price projection of it of 218.90. It, somehow, some way, this thing wants to make it up to that level. We'll see what ends up happening. We're in window dressing starting today. Window dressing goes until about uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, and then that, that's all she wrote. NDX 100. We go over to the NDX 100, the three Qs. Three Qs are trading at 115.06. Now, the three Qs and the composite are also in a ABC structure on the way up. I suspect they're not going to make it. I just don't see... Um, how uh, the Qs and the Nasdaq Composite are actually going to make it up there. Uh, we had Google come out with numbers last night, nice numbers. That puts some big juice in. That's up 22 bucks. You got Amazon come out with numbers. That baby is up uh, three and a half dollars. Had been up 14 dollars. Uh, bottom line, most of the large big dogs are out, so I don't see it getting up into. Uh, that those ABC structures in the NASDAQ composite NAW in the NDX 100. Gold contract. What do we have with gold? We take a look at the gold contract. Gold contract caught a bid out here this morning. Gold contract is trading up $19.70. You're at $13.60. Um, has the volume behind the move. Uh, gold's uh, $13.66, your next number. We'll see how it handles $13.66. The highs thus far have been $13.84. Silver, silver, silver's a little bit different out here. So we get divergence inside this market. Um, silver got down to a price point of 20 bucks today, uh, rejected the lower price. Um, actually, let me see something. One second. I want to see, make sure. Silver's probably rolling over too. One second. Silver. No, that's 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 the contract. That's the most active contract. Uh, so silver's a little bit different. Uh, bottom line, you know, we had a high out there, silver yesterday of uh, 2058. Uh, we'll see if uh, silver can make it up into the 2055 level. Bonds. We go to the 10-year bond. We take a look at the 10-year bond. This is what you have. 10-year um, bond out here has done 1.4 million contracts. Uh, you're at 133. Uh, bottom line is that uh, this does not look like it's going to 
get back into lower price. And here's, this, was, this is where we have some divergence out here. And what the divergence would be is that you have the aspect that, uh, one second, there she goes. The markets are actually flat. Bonds move in top side. And the way these bonds are moving top side, it looks to me that the, uh, we're at 133.02. That 133, well, 133.08 is the next game. The bottom line is that if we take a look at the, the 10 year, the 10 year is trading at 1.4 yield right now. So, bottom line is that prices are going up once again, yields are going down. We go take a look at the 30 year, same setup in the 30 year. What you have with the 30 year? 30 year has done 290,000 contracts, which is, good, which is good contract volume. We're at 174.14. This is going to make a run for that 175.04. And King Dollar. Let's go over to King Dollar. So King Dollar is getting toasted and roasted out here today. You're down with 34,000 contracts. Uh, we've done volume of, uh, no, you know, we've done 34,000 contracts, which is big volume. You're down 1,200 ticks. We are at 95.45. So 95.37 is the swing low. Uh, now we've hit that low, and we've hit that low with big volume. So that's saying, guess what, you're going to be back down there and we'll see whether King Dollar wants to run right against how it broke topside on June 24th. That June 24th level, uh, 93.73, that's the bottom of that uh, level and you know we'll see whether it's one that goes topside from that level. Um, the yen, we go over and take a look at the yen and a lot of, not all this movement was from the yen, uh, but what you did have last night, which uh, is that uh, in Japan, folks, they didn't put more, st uh, the Japan market was looking for more stimulus into the marketplace. They didn't get it. The yen got stronger. The yen went from $105 to 101 And of course, the lower that the price of the yen gets, the stronger it gets. Uh, we'll see with the yen, looks like it's going to go after the 100.31 level. Uh, our own markets, our own movement uh, in the gold market, as well as the uh, dollar came out when our GDP came out. When our GDP came out, what you had, you had gold spike uh, up about uh, ten dollars. Uh, we we spiked from uh, uh, thirteen forty one up to the price point of thirteen fifty four. Um, it's kind of counterintuitive right now uh, what we actually have happening. Specifically, what I'm talking about is that with the Bank of Japan not going more uh, the more monetary stimulus. Um, the, the correlation basically would be just the opposite of what we have happening versus our own GDP coming out. As soon as our GDP came out, uh, markets themselves are flat, uh, dollar goes down, metals go up. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at the small caps. What we have with the small caps is this. Russell 2000, you're up 33 cents. You're at 121.16. And bottom line, you know, it's, it's pretty wild how this has been working out. First, we had the SPY break topside. Then we, uh, a couple weeks later, we had the NDX 100 as well as the NASDAQ composite break topside. And now what you have is that you do have the small caps pushing a uh, swing point with volume. So we'll see uh, if, in fact, uh, the next few days, uh, as window dressing lines up, uh, can they push this market a bit higher before we go lower. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. You stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Let's go to uh, Dave in Boston. Hey, Dave, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I'm good. I'm good. So hey, you, I heard you and Andy, you and Andy talking about uh, Coco yesterday, and um, been looking at this uh, ETN nib there. And I want to see if you think it's time to maybe nib, nibble on it. Okay, let's take a look. So let's nibble on some chocolate. So <laughs> NIB uh, is the symbol, folks. It's the IPATH Bloomberg Coco uh, Subtotal Index. Um, it's an ETN, so it provides a cash payment at the scheduled maturity. Um, of the underlying cocoa uh, index. The low is 30, you know, the low is uh, 35, the high is 44. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This is illiquid. I mean, there's only 4,000 shares traded out here today. It's pretty intense. Um, okay, so 3568. I'd. I'd 3527. I'd let this still get lower. Let me pull up the actual Coco contract for a second. Okay, so Coco, Coco, there we are. So Coco's down a half a percent today. We're at $2,830 a ton. Yeah, I'd let this go a bit lower, man. This is what this okay. just, it just tucked its, its head. Okay, so the bottom of the range that it has been in is 2843 a ton. And it got under that today. It's 28.35. So that's saying this can get out of 27.50, man. Okay. Yeah. And when you say it's illiquid, I mean, is there a problem? I, I play the options. I, I've never played this when I played the uh, JO, the coffee, and I never had problems with it. You don't have, it's not trouble getting out of them um, when you say that, is there? I mean, as far as the. Well, uh, the let's see. I would say that, um, yeah, I mean, I just pulled up, I would say, yeah, because I just pulled up the options. And there is no liquidity in them, you know. So the bid ask spread um, is, wide. is way too wide. Yeah, you know, right. they, they'll sell you a 34 call for 170, uh, no, for 220, and they'll only buy it back at 170. <laughs> you know? Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, that, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't go in that, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay. All right, I'll stay away. Okay, man. Right, have, so. have a yeah, great one, man. Have a safe one. Let's go to the uh, GDX. Okay, so we had a couple targets that want to look at the GDX. The GDX, folks, is the um, uh, market vectors uh, a trust ETF structure. Uh, it's trading at thirty dollars and seventy-five cents. We got a couple calls on this this morning too. So what you have here is this: 
Uh, this baby is right at its highs. Um, the test is going to be, you know, coming right into the close out here. The bottom line is that you close over uh, the high, which is uh, 3068, which with the rover right now, that can go higher. You know, yeah, you know, we had a couple questions that uh, the volume's lower and it is, but guess what? Uh, this closes over the high and that can go higher. Uh, what it ha has also done, if you happen to be into, you know, candlestick charting or council charting, this is a lost engulfing. And a lot, the way a lost engulfing works is that you, uh, you started the week below the trading of the last three weeks. You finish above it, it actually looks uh, positive, but it, it isn't, okay? Uh, what the last engulfing also does, though, is this, is that you need a second signal, so you need to follow through that it actually goes lower uh, GDX next week. Um, I'll pull the GDX up again to say look at it on a weekly basis. So if we put this on a weekly, you know, what you're going to see in the weekly is that uh, the last high up here was uh, 3073. And uh, right when we come into the close, this is going to be a trip watching it because uh, we're at 3075, you know. Uh, what is intriguing now inside of this, okay, when you break this down, um, meaning breaking down what's inside the, uh, the GDX, what is putting juice into it today is Newmont. Newmont is the second largest weighting inside it. It's up $1.31. Where Barrick doesn't have any juice on it. Barrick uh, is up 75 cents. Uh, Wrangell Resources, you know, bottom line, strong stock, but it's only up buck 32. Aniko Eagle is putting some juice into it. That is up a uh, buck 83 at 58.37. Uh, if we do go over to the XAU and the HUI, this is where this is also going to get uh, uh, pretty tricky, and this is what it is. The XAU and the HUI, okay, they both are, are coming into their swing points and they're coming in with volume. Uh, at the, what happens is I don't get the volume until the end of the day, when we very well may have ABC structures on the way up. Uh, in both of those, and if that's what we have, guess what? That would mean that uh, that GDX uh, also would go higher, take the swing point out, take it out with volume, all of the above. Some of the uh, higher volume stocks in this market, let's go take a look at them. Uh, you got, uh, let's see, so we get Barrick up 74 cents, Yamada Gold's down 11. Uh, oh, this is interesting. I brought up all the gold ones. Oh, oh, that's interesting. So I had the XAU up inside it. Let me put the S&P back up inside it. Okay, so inside the S&P, we have uh, Bank of America down 15 cents. You get GE off 9. Uh, Exxon Mobil's down 177. Let me show you something here with Exxon. So Exxon's getting toasted and roasted, folks, okay? But the XLE uh, has rejected lower price. Exxon... Uh, worst profit numbers since 1999, I think. Yeah, since 1999. Big, big loss. Uh, well, not loss. They just didn't make their numbers. Uh, Exxon being down, guess what? If we go over to the XLE, if you want to see a test, uh, bottom line, it was going right into the last swing point. Last swing point being the 27th of June. We got down to $65.69. The high of the June swing point is 65.93. You're going to see a rejection of lower price with lighter volume. What that's saying is that inside the, the XLE, there are other stocks that are stronger, uh, which is pretty wild, too, because Chevron, you know, also was down into lows. That rejected lower price also. So uh, if we go over to the, if you want to see something that's really wild, we go over to the oil market, this is what you have. You go over to the oil market, and the test that we were, we were talking about was the April 18th swing low. That swing low was $40.58. Well, guess what? What do we do? We go to $40.57, rejects lower price, has lighter volume. Now you're going to bounce. And the bounce in the oil market, folks, can get you all the way up to ice, which would be $45.57 on this contract. And all that would be, by the way, if you bounce on lighter volume, that would be a larger ABC structure on the way down. But thus far, what we have out here today is that you have rejection of lower price, you have lighter volume, so the bounce 
I would say, is on the oil market. And the XLE is really telling you that also, because it's pretty amazing that you can have Exxon down so far when it's such a large weighting structure, uh, and the XLE still goes topside. Uh, let's go over to the euro. We take a look at the euro. Uh, what we have with the euro is this. Now, what's also going to happen is this. The euro, as the dollar goes south, uh, euro goes north. Euro's trading at uh, 111. And uh, bottom line is that at 4 o'clock our time, which is pretty wild, the European Central Banks are going to come out with their stress test. Now, their stress tests are totally different than ours. It, it doesn't, it's really not going to uh, close down any banks. <laughs> Um, but it will affect the currencies. The, the currencies have been ruling the markets uh, since last night, folks, when the Bank of Japan uh, decided to not put actually more stimulus into their bond market. They came in, they're going to buy more ETFs, but that's it. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. You stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now uh, is down 34. The Nasdaq's up four. S&Ps are up uh, one and a half. If we look at inside the NDX 100 and see what the strength is, uh, you get Google and Regeneron. Uh, Google is up 3.5%. Uh, you got Regeneron up 3.1%. Uh, uh, we are at $424 on Regeneron. So let's go take a look at this equity because uh, that Nasdaq composite won't stop until the uh, IBB is also uh, ready to give it up. So Regeneron is an equity that went from $600 uh, 
uh, down to 329. <laughs> that was uh, the $600 we were talking about was August of 2015. Now you're coming up into ice. So 433, and we're at 423 right now. If we go over to the IBB and we take a look at the IBB, what we have is this um, 288. Oh man, what a trip. So 289 is the number, 289.70. Uh, thus far, it's at 289.09. Put this on a weekly and see what we look like. So on a weekly, you're coming into 9 million. You've done 6.5. I just, I'd like to see it hit the, the swing point. It hasn't hit the swing point yet. Well, one second. No, it hasn't. We hit, so the swing high is 289.70. And thus far, we've hit 289.09. You want this to test first, folks. The difference with a test is, is this. Even when it's off two or three pennies, even a $290 deal, that's still not a test. They can get close. When they test, they're gonna tell you, can you make it on price? And what a test would be is it wants to go higher. Guess what, it just gets over it, closes over it, wants to go higher. If, it's, if it goes over it, closes under it, has lighter volume, that's your test. That means that the bottom line your probability is that that's going to be it. Now you're going to go down to the other side. Um, and the IBB, uh, you got to let that thing uh, play out. We go look at the uh, NASDAQ composite because the tricky thing here is going to be the composite still isn't that ABC structure on the way up. I just don't see it uh, hitting it. And the reason I don't see it hitting it is this, is that we're at 5160. The ABC structure is 5469. What we did do... Uh, last night, well, picture this week. This week you had Apple come out with numbers, and we go to go to Apple. Apple good numbers. Apple gapped higher. You know, Apple had closed at uh, ninety-six dollars, open the next day at one hundred and four. You're at one hundred and four dollars and thirteen cents. You take a look at Apple and say, guess what? Yeah, can can you get to one hundred and five? Yeah, you can. But that is where Apple broke down, and it broke down doing nine, uh, doing three hundred and forty-nine million shares. Well. Even with a great week, we only did 247 million. It's not, that's, that doesn't fly. Facebook, let's take a look at Facebook. Facebook come out with numbers. These are all the big dogs, of course. Facebook came out with numbers. Stock had closed at uh, 123, opened the next day at 128. You're still at 124. Facebook, nice setup, no doubt. Uh, it's a, wouldn't be an ABC up because what happened with Facebook is that uh, the retracement uh, from the last pullback uh, on July 1st actually came back too far. That being said, you know, you are pushing with volume. You're at 124.16, but, you know, the numbers came out all of the above. I, I don't expect Facebook to jump up another 10, 10 bucks. Google, we go take a look at Google. What we have with Google, Google, big numbers. Uh, Google had closed at a price point of 739 jump to 769. Now, Google is also a confirmed ABC up, and the price tag on Google is in the, eight, in the 800s. That being said, guess what? I don't see Google making it either. Why? Because this baby, when this came down from 769.90, now this is going to be really cool watching this shake out, and this is why. When Google came down in April on their earnings, it started at $769.90. Goes right down to 713. We did 14.1 million shares. Well, we're gonna do a lot less than that. Right now we're 10.4 uh, million, 778.55. And we've tested that high. So if Google closes under 769.9, bottom line, that would be a failure on price and volume and that would be a real tricky one, folks, big time. So it's going to be wild. You know, right now we're 15 cents underneath that on the weekly basis. You know, but that's, that's how that baby is set up. Now let's go to Amazon, because these are the four big dogs, no doubt, inside the NDX 100. We go to Amazon. Amazon pushed into its swing point, had volume, got to a price point of 766 today. You trade to 759. You know, it looks to me like, you know, a 7.57. Well, this is how this would go. Google, I mean, Amazon would have to close today 
under 757.34. If it closes over that, you can go higher. Uh, but you can see when we just went through those, what it looks like is that it looks like Apple is going to fail in the weekly. It looks like Google's going to fail on the weekly, and that's a big, that's a big dog if that's what you have. So uh, what would be really cool is that if the NDX100 uh, somehow uh, could just push up into that another 60, well, another 70 cents before it gave it up on spades. Because then what you'd have, you'd have Harmony uh, in that marketplace that that also failed. Um, a little more divergence out here is that we have the small caps, which we were talking about, what happened with the small caps now is that the small caps turned around and that is pushing its high of 121.46 and it's pushing it with some volume on the daily. If we go into the weekly, well, this is cool. So the weekly is a different ball game. 120. Yeah, it's not going to fail on the weekly on price though. Yeah, I don't see it. 121.68. I see what it's doing. Okay. So, man, let me pull this back a bit. So we're in a, I see. Interesting. Okay. So eh, this could be a failure too. Small caps. IWM has gone into the swing point from December 4th, the week of December 4th. That's 120.07. No, it's going to make that. So we're 121, uh, well, 121.12. Yeah, bottom line, this has to, we'd have to close under 120.07 in order to have a failure inside of the small caps. Um, and I, I don't see that flying either. Uh, the composite volume out here today, this is what you have inside the volume. We're, we're going to do... Um, we're going to do some decent volume inside the NYSE. We're at 615 million right now. That's saying it's going to come in about 900 million. On the composite, what we have, you have uh, 1.5. That's going to come in shot. That's going to be about 1.8. If we do go look at the, um, uh, the NYA, what you're going to see uh, is that that's up 36. This is the New York composite. Uh, this baby's still weak. This baby uh, can't handle ice. Ice is set up at 10,819. This came to 10,815 the week of uh, July 15th. Uh, transports, same type of setup inside the transports, meaning that it can't make higher price. Uh, transports are trading out at 78.45, and the high in the transports is way up there. You're talking about 9,310. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFN. You stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Dow Industrials down 30. Nasdaq's up four and a half. S&P's up two and a half. We're going to be right back. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. 
For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. 877 927 6648. Give us a call, folks. I want to know what's going on in your world. Let's go over to the world of uh, Whole Foods. So Whole Foods came out with numbers, folks. Uh, bottom line, the uh, market, uh, well, <laughs> uh, investors didn't like it. They sold it down from $34.47 down to this $30.26. This baby is building cars. It's building cars to go after its lowest swing point, the lowest swing point being uh, $28.18. We go take a look at the... Um, Let's go over to Microsoft. We take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft is laying at its highs out here. Now, Microsoft had jumped higher when it came out with its numbers. Uh, we are at the top of the range, that range being $56.79. Um, now, the thing that's pretty wild about Microsoft is this. Um, this range has been going on in Microsoft since October of 2015. And it's very subtle. We ran with volume last week. We did 239 million last week. I get to $56.84. This week, you only did 144 million. So this is going to be a, really a close call because if Microsoft closes on a weekly basis, this is under 56.84, which it's at 56.60 right now, that also would be a failure and it would be saying that, guess what? Microsoft would be staying in a consolidation, which would be really weird, man. And the reason I'm saying that, folks, is that this has been going on for a long time in the market as well as a lot of the, these large cap stocks. And this one here is a real tricky one, too, because what Microsoft had done is this. Microsoft had gone to hell in a handbag when they came out with their numbers in April. They went from $56.77 down to $50.77. They made it all the way back topside, and the volume was good last week. You know, we had uh, 239 million going against that 255. You can see what happens. It still wasn't enough, but it was good. The problem is this week. The problem is that it got to a higher high, closed under it, and this thing is subtle, man. And when I, when I mean subtle, when I talk like what I'm talking about is that you, it's, it's only losing it by a few pennies. And when you lose it by a few pennies, it's like, okay, is it a failure or not? It's a failure. That's what, I, what I've found is this. This is what's really wild after looking at so many charts over the course of the years. Is that the, nothing goes up forever on volume and nothing goes down forever. When these tests take place and you have a high volume spike and it looks great. That's beautiful. When you get over that level and the volume dies in the, in the vine like we did with Microsoft, get out of the way. You know, so it looks to me that when we come back to work on Monday, Monday and Tuesday is the 1st and 2nd of August. That 2nd of August is the end of window dressing. Window dressing, folks, is the last couple days of the month, the following first couple days of the next month. And what that's all about, the last couple days of the month, you have portfolio managers basically fixing or making their portfolios look good. And the way they do that, 
They get rid of the things that didn't work for the month. They put the ones in that look good so that when their clients are looking at the portfolio, say, oh, I get this one, I get this one. They really can't figure out, geez, why is my account still down when they, 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 it looks like you got winners or she got winners inside the account? Now, that's, that's what window dressing is the last couple of days of the month. At the first couple of days of the month, what window dressing is, is that it's the amount of IRA money that just comes out of checks that goes into the marketplace. So that is a normally a, a time of the month that you're going to have more buying than selling. So that's what that's all about. Now, what happens is that once it comes out of all our paychecks and goes into the marketplace, it's bought up immediately. Why? Because money managers only get paid for money that is into equities or bonds. They do not get paid on cash in accounts. Okay, so that happens very quickly. So market-wise, when we look at this market, it looks to me like whether it's gonna be Wednesday or Thursday, that looks to me like it's gonna be the sell in this marketplace. You know, so we'll see where the whole thing shakes out. What I do expect we're gonna have, though, also on Sunday night, well, it's probably gonna start at four o'clock as soon as we, our markets close here. Whatever that bank structure is, inside of the European Central um, Union, I suspect that's not going to be great. And we'll see how that twists and turns with the dollar and with the euro and, you know, maybe with the yen uh, Sunday night, you know, because the, the way that this seems to be shaking out is that it looks to me like we're coming up to a top. Uh, if we go over and we take a look at the UK, uh, what we have with the UK, this UK has been trading exactly like we're trading, um, just going sideways. What we did have out here today, and this is really subtle, is that you know you had a small expansion of volume. No, that's that was yesterday, so that wasn't today. I don't have today's volume yet. You know, so the UK has been trading at the same place since the July 12th. The DAX in Germany. We take a look at the DAX in Germany. DAX in Germany is right at its highs. That was up uh, 62 bucks today. The high, let's see, 101 million, going to 95. That's a tough one, too. It's a tough one. It's like, a, is it going to make it the 10,474 uh, level? You know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, we go to the Hang Sang. We take a look at the Hang Sang. Actually, let's go to the, let's go to the Nikkei, because the Nikkei is what had the action last night. Uh, Nikkei, uh, bottom line is that, uh, and this is, this is uh, counterintuitive also, because what the Nikkei did is this. The Nikkei got down to a price point of uh, 16,174 and then rallied 400 points. Uh, that, that with the aspect that a, you have a stronger yen. And that is not how uh, those markets have been trading, folks. Uh, bottom line is that the Nikkei has liked a weaker yen. Why? Because that's where the large exporters can make a lot more money. You know, it's hard to believe that uh, the yen has got so strong, um, or has been so strong over the course of so many years, and that the, uh, you know, the Toyotas of the world, the Mitsubishis of the world, it's hard to believe that they actually could stay in business. Because uh, it, uh, they did. That's the, that's the bottom line. That that's all that matters, that they actually did stay in business. Uh, we go up and we take a look at the, uh, let's go to Harmony in South Africa. So we take a look at some of these uh, South African stocks. What you're going to see, Harmony was one of the first ones that came off the lows. Um, still consolidating, though. You know, in fact, uh, Harmony's trading at the 6,200 and the 61 uh, Rand dollars. If we go look at that Rand dollar, the Rand dollar right now in correlation. Well, interesting. Okay, so the Rand dollar, once again, um, is starting to get stronger versus weaker. Uh, this is a long way to go, to, to go though. Uh, the Rand dollar is trading at 13 point eight rand dollars to one u.s dollar when it had hit its high meaning its weakest point of january this year it was 17.91 uh the way this is trading right now this is going to be a problem for these some of these south africans so we'll have a shot of getting into uh our harmony once again uh, and this is what it is we broke the consolidation that it's in that was 14.33. That's saying that the Rand dollar now wants to get out of 12.95. And of course, that means that the Rand dollars will get stronger. 
um, that'll put some selling pressure inside a few of those South African equities. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. That Dow wants to claw back to positive. Have to love it. Dow's down one. NASDAQ's up 14. S&Ps are up six. We're going to be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And folks, don't forget uh, at TFNN, Every trading day, well, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we do 10 hours of, uh, well, we, we nine hours. We go from 8 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. Tuesday, Thursday, we go from 7 in the morning to 6 in the afternoon. Now, all that programming, you can get right on your cell phone. Go to TFNN.com, hit Tiger TV. You're going to get great HD audio as well as video. Uh, and if you uh, haven't checked it out uh, yet, uh, the Tiger TV, please check it out. It's absolutely awesome. Um, don't forget, the um, if you'd like to test drive uh, any of my newsletters, meaning the Gold Report, or Market Insights, the way you can do that, you come over to our website, at TFNN, and what you do is you go to Newsletters. If you'd like to test drive the Gold Report, you go to Investment newsletters, you can test drive the Gold Report 30 days absolutely free. If you'd like to test drive my Market Insights, which is a daily newsletter, you go to newsletters, you go to trading newsletters, you can test drive that 30 days. Uh, bottom line is that uh, you can do both uh, if you like. Uh, check it out over the weekend. So what are we expecting out here next week? Bottom line, Monday and Tuesday, folks. I do expect that uh, more than likely uh, this thing's going to try to push slightly higher. I don't see it a lot, 
But I'd love to see this uh, S&P finish off its ABC structure on the way up. Right now, we're at 2.1730. Uh, we're right next to it. We're $1.60 away from it. Uh, two, uh, eighteen ninety is the ABC structure. As I said a little bit earlier in the broadcast, I don't see the Qs, nor the NDX, uh, or the NASDAQ composite finishing that ABC structure up. The reason being is that we're at one fifteen thirty three. That structure is a one twenty one for the Qs. If we go look at the composite, the composite is uh, trading fifty one sixty five. That is 54.69. I just don't um, see uh, enough weighting structure inside of the NDX 100, nor the composite, to get up into those levels. And what I expect we're going to see actually is a failure. Why? Because the NYA still hasn't been able to do anything. The transports haven't been able to do anything. Uh, the expansion has taken place in many of these equities. You're coming uh, into the end of the month, you're coming into window dressing, and it's like, okay, what are you gonna give me now? That's, that's the real bottom line. What are you gonna give me now? And my take is that uh, bottom line, we're in hurricane season, you're coming into August, you're coming into September, and guess what? <laughs> in the market, uh, coming, into the, coming into September in general, at highs, with light volume, because that's how we're coming into it. What we're doing is this. See, the ABC structure that came up, it took the B point out, took it out with volume, legit ABCs. That being said, what is not legit is that all the volume is still downtown. And what we'll see whether, if, in fact, we get a uh, failure of the 213 on the SPY. Because what will happen is that the S&P would have to pull back quite a bit in order to fail. You know, uh, if we take a look at the cash, let me get to the cash price quickly. So the cash price on the S&P right now, we're at 2173. Uh, that, that, that cash price has to get uh, back under uh, 2134 in order to have that failure. Because when we took off uh, on the, the week of the 15th, bottom line, the week of that 15th, um, that has, that, that took off over that area in order to get back, not only to the lower price, but I'm talking about a real correction. You'd have to get down into that. You'd have to get down into that with volume expanding. That's who I'd be looking for. But, you know, that's what I suspect is going to, uh, that we're going to have, um, you know, the next, uh, by the end of next week, I expect that's where this turn is going to take place. And always remember, folks. Whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. And whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it like a nice big motion picture. Step into it, take ownership of it, and fly with it. Thanks for being here, folks. Have a great weekend, safe weekend. Look forward to speaking to right back here Monday morning, 8 o'clock. Go get them, folks. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is TFNN.